So if you, if you were with us yesterday, um, you've seen the first session of um, a series of four. We called it uh, Low Web Success Stories. What, we, what we're doing is we're inviting previous uh, startup competition winners to come on stage here because they're doing great things for brands. So yesterday, you might have seen uh, Guillaume de Cugis from Scoopit. And so the second um, speaker from this series is uh, Mathieu Chéreau from Tiger Lily. Tiger Lily won the web startup competition in 2009 yesterday. As uh, I did a mistake. It was 2007 for Scoopit. Um, and Tiger Lily is a social media marketing platform. And so in the next 10 minutes, Mathieu Chéreau will share what he's doing with Tiger Lily and what his vision is about a uh, social media marketing platform. Please help me welcome Mathieu Chéreau. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mathieu Chéreau. I'm the CEO and, and co-founder of Tiger Lily. And uh, it's always a pleasure to be here uh, at Le Web. Thanks, uh, Cédric, for the invite. And um, well, today I'd like to tell you the story of, uh, of Tiger Lily, which is a social marketing platform that helps uh, large companies manage and optimize their uh, actions across the social web. So how we got to create Tiger Lily? Um, it's a fun story. Uh, back in 2009, uh, we had a small digital agency, and we we were quite bored with uh, uh, clients' projects. So we decided to uh, participate to a hackathon. And this hackathon was a global hackathon. It was called Wales Rumble. And we decided to create a custom uh, uh, app that enabled uh, brands to create custom tabs uh, in Facebook. It was meant to be a content management system, really easy to use with uh, drag and drop widgets. And uh, it was an instant success. We had reviews in Red Light Web, and the feedback was uh, really great. And yet, the app didn't work, <laughs> which was quite um, uh, a problem. So we decided just to spend six months, six months uh, to consolidate the platform to enrich it as much as possible. And um, eventually, we came up six months after with a complete suite of application dedicated for brands to manage all their Facebook tabs. What we did is enter the Facebook, uh, the, the, the web, actually, uh, uh, competition. We ended up winning this uh, competition. And meanwhile, we had the great pleasure to meet the gorgeous uh, tech minister at the time, I swear this is a true picture of her. This is Natalie Kosciuszko-Morizet. And anyways, thanks to this award, we ended up signing our first clients the second day of the web. So Marie, if you're here today, thanks again for, for your trust in the early days. So after this success, we had a year of free visibility thanks to the web, a year of incoming leads pretty much every day from all over the world. What we did in 2010 was to really uh, grow the user base, but most of our revenue went, came from uh, large companies. So what I decided in, uh, in 2011 was to really focus on 41,000 companies. We were able to raise um, like a seed round, a million uh, euros approximately, and we started to, to grow the revenue significantly. Um, 2012 was a key year for us because we were a French company with a limited footprint across uh, Europe. And uh, it was really key for us to extend our reach. Uh, we were dealing with uh, global customers, and we had to extend our reach to all, pretty much all continents. So back in 2012, we went from a couple of covering a couple of European countries to up to 40 uh, different countries, as a matter of fact. And today, we are serving about 60 different uh, global companies across more than 60 different countries. And we operate pretty much in uh, any uh, industry, uh, ranking from uh, financial services, telecom company, um, lots of luxury clients at LVMH, Richmond, etc. Um, CPG, uh, such as L'Oréal, and also uh, a couple of pure players, such as uh, e-commerce platform, and uh, also, for instance, Spotify uh, in the entertainment business. And which is interesting uh, regarding those clients is that um, 
they don't use the platform the same way all the time, depending on the industry. So to, to date, I mean, the first trend we see in uh, social media management is that, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our mission at Tiger Lily is to enable those large brands to become social businesses. And what does that mean exactly? That means enabling all the departments to collaborate uh, between each other as easier as possible. Uh, so that they can talk together, they can work together, they can leverage social as much as possible. W whether it is to optimize communication and increase brand consistency, whether it is uh, leverage social to increase uh, marketing performances, or, of course, dealing with all customer services uh, issues and being able to pull it in real time, incoming messages, and to deal as much as possible as much efficiency uh, uh, as possible uh, with those uh, incoming messages. And uh, eventually, it's key for us to enable our uh, clients to make sales, <laughs> to leverage social, to be in a position where they can convert users into customers. And that's a big deal because for lots of time, I mean, our clients were really focused on social, looking after uh, fans, look, looking after engagement, etc. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about sales, it's all about satisfaction for customers, but also about sales and conversion. So um, for us, our mission is to like, convert uh, as much as possible our, our clients into social business, and, um, and it's a long mission. Uh, so now, how to prepare for the future of social? I mean, uh, the whole uh, theme of uh, the web this year is plotting the future, how about plotting the future of social? and getting prepared uh, for it. Uh, I have mainly uh, four, uh, four tips uh, about how to prepare for the future. The first one would be be uh, in a position where you can pick pretty much any uh, social platform you want, any social platform that is relevant for you, depending on your industry, depending on the focus on the markets, Asia, uh, Americas, Europe. I mean, more and more you will have to pick specific uh, destinations, social channels, depending on your industry, and uh, you will have to uh, add additional social platforms more and more because, as you can see, it's always evolving. So you have to pick a platform that enables you to evolve um, in the next uh, future. So that's the first thing. Second thing has to do with being able to interact pretty much on any device. I mean, you, you want to have a platform that you can use on the move. It's, it's start to be the case for a couple of platforms, but it should be a wall for you to be able to reach those uh, tools pretty much in any uh, condition. So that's the second tip. Uh, third tip, be able, being able to use any language. If you run a company that is um, uh, reaching or targeting four markets, 10, 10 markets, 100 markets, implementing a platform is, is a huge challenge for you. It has to be a really simple to use platform. It has to be a platform that is maybe localized in four, 10, a hundred different languages to make it easy for your local managers to access this platform and use it on a daily basis. And that's really key. It just sounds like a detail, but that's key regarding implementation and just usage of the platform across uh, all the country uh, you are operating in. And the, the, f the fourth uh, uh, tip has to do with um, managing like booming communities. Maybe you start with a couple of 10 or 1,000 uh, users across your social channels, but you might end up in, fi in five years with maybe a million users. And that's a lot of uh, incoming messages to deal with in real time. So just make sure that your platform is safe and reliable so you can manage huge amount of data in the next few years. I had to that, for three things. First of all, the need to have a global vision regarding your paid and earned media. To be in a position to optimize your social mix as much as possible. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, 
being able to in access instant recommendations because you don't have the time to dive deep in the data. Uh, your local managers don't have the time for that. So they need to access optimization tips so they can instantly, on a day-to-day -day basis, optimize their actions. Maybe you work with, I don't know, a Chile local manager or, or Switzerland, and it happens to be a communication manager. It doesn't have the time to manage social. So you should just access the tips and, and optimize continuously uh, its, uh, its actions. And third tip, like be in a position to, like, access instant insights regarding conversion and link your platforms, your social uh, channels with your digital properties such as e-commerce websites, for instance. It's really key to track all that, to integrate your, your social platform with the rest uh, to, to have instant insights regarding conversions. And I'm really happy today to to launch, uh, to announce the launch uh, next year and the beginning of the next year of our new platform that will enable you to, to achieve all that. Just to finish uh, for a minute, um, it's, it's really key for, for all the large brands to integrate more and more social data. And it starts with uh, users' data. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal in terms of organization. It's a big deal in terms of technology. There's lots of stuff that are done already in terms of targeting. Facebook and Twitter well, launch a, a new ad product pretty much every day regarding targeting, whether it is targeting or retargeting. So it's, it's really creative space for ads uh, using and leveraging social data. And, uh, and I'm sure there, there will be some huge challenge in the next uh, few years uh, in that uh, area. And um, I will be glad to, to come back to, uh, next year and tell you more about uh, what it's possible to do with uh, all that. Thanks a lot uh, for your time. I hope it was interesting. And uh, I will be here all day to talk with you. Bye.